we're going to start with a little intro and then we'll just go from there, okay? Roger that. Alright. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new edition of the Frankie Floss Show and my first broadcast of 2007. And what would be a broadcast without a, a brand new interview? Well, I have with me a guy who's very close to the area, but uh, who's had a legendary career. Uh, a famous stunt guy, a stunt coordinator, even a race car driver at one time, and a, and a, and a fellow roper as well, a bull rider. Uh, he's been in such films as Kansas City, uh, The January Man, and Quantum Leap, and many other different TV shows and movies as a stunt guy and stunt coordinator, coordinator and whatnot. I give you Greg Walker. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me, Frankie. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's, it's a nice uh, finally uh, meet somebody that's actually not so far away for once, you know? Well, Bemidji isn't very far. I'm in Bemidji, Minnesota, which is just a little south of you guys. Oh, yeah. It's uh, basically just, uh, just a couple-hour drive, basically. Or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, to anyway, to, uh, as a way to start off the interview, uh, uh, let the people know or
was a bull rider before I started doing stunt work. And, uh, well, I guess now that I'm kind of semi-retired, uh, the passion for the rodeo life has come back again, and I'm now getting involved in uh, the raising of uh, bucket bulls and uh, getting involved with some of the breeders and people that are in that business. And I'm uh, hooked up with a friend of mine, not to be so long-winded, but just to give you a little bit of what's going on, I'm hooked up right now with a friend of mine named Mike Porter that uh, has a website called rodeostockyard.com, which is an online auction uh, website for rodeo stock and rodeo equipment. And I'm kind of a... Uh, secondary administrator for him when he needs a little help. He set me up so I can go in and, and help him when he's out of town. And, and uh, that's kind of what I've been doing the last uh, year or so. Well, that's, that's interesting. It, it's nice to know that you, you, you like to keep yourself uh, very busy and whatnot. Very busy with uh, that little whether it be with stunt coordinating or be in the rodeo or just race car driving or, or just whatever, you know, whatever interests you. I did look at your website, obviously, that's how I met you, but uh, I also understand that you're really into, like, nature and wildlife, and that's why you kind of picked uh, North, northern Minnesota or Bemidji or where you live right now uh, as a uh, place to live because it's so beautiful around there. That's very true, and it is... It, uh Fell in, it kind of fell into our lap. My wife is a wildlife artist, uh, a very wonderful painter. I'm a little prejudiced, but yeah. I can say that without any uh, remorse. She, she's a beautiful painter. I don't know if you got a chance to check her. Yeah, out. yes, I, I did. I had a link to hers. And uh, well, I came here specifically to uh, look at and buy the racetrack here. And, and when we got settled and realized what a beautiful spot and wildlife uh, area it is, how much habitat there was here, uh, it just fit right in, and so when we decided not to do the racetrack anymore, we did stay here in northern Minnesota because of that. Oh, yeah. So my wife is uh, working diligently, uh, doing her wildlife artwork, and she still does some western art. Actually, she's gotten started just recently uh, doing portraits of, of uh, bucket bulls and rodeo stock, which has been real popular. <laughs> you know, they want a portrait of their favorite bucket bull before they pass away or something. Yeah. It's been real, it's been real good. But she works real hard, too. She's uh, uh, vice president and, and chairman of the membership of uh, a group called the Women Artists of the West, which is now, it, it was based on the West Coast, but now it's all over the United States and Canada. And uh, so that keeps us both busy. I help her, and she helps me. Well, that's, that's kind of nice, a uh, nice team effort, you know, that you guys got. And yeah, I did go to her website, too, and uh, it's, it's, she, she is very talented. She's very good. I'm very... She got uh, pictures out of there that I, you know that you would think that were just photos just taken, but they're so real realistic that wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's very true. She is a realist. Uh, some people enjoy that 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 type of work. Uh, we do. Uh, there, we know there's all kinds of different uh, uh, attitudes and, and and personal taste, but we particularly like the uh, the uh, realist work. And uh, you can reach if anybody's interested out there, they can go to her website at lindawalkerart.com. It's real easy to find, and just take a look. She does some really beautiful stuff. And uh, does she uh, sell anything online at all? Or yeah, yes, she does. Uh, uh, there are there are some prices there, and, and processes, and PayPal, and all the regular internet stuff. But it, it's all there. Uh, she does do. She's getting back into doing more shows, uh, personal appearances. And shows and stuff. Actually, she just got home. She spent the whole month of November in California and Hawaii doing an art show out there. Oh, wow. And uh, so I finally got her home here and uh, trying to get her back to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. And, and now, now with, the, with you now, with your, your outstanding career, uh, your 40 some career, uh, your career uh, just being in the entertainment industry, uh, I noticed here that you were... Of course, you've been on some TV shows, obviously. Uh, you were in Kung Fu, and you were in, uh, well, you were in the, uh, about three or four episodes of that amount, or? Kung, Kung Fu? Yeah. Actually, uh, I was the uh, coordinator on, the, now this is the original in the early 70s. Yeah. Uh, they, they went on and did an additional show here a, lot, oh, a few years ago called The Legend of Kung Fu, using David Carradine also, but I went in and I worked on the original uh, TV series, uh, in 1972 through 74, we did like three seasons. Okay. Uh, so I worked on all but, I'd say, three episodes of that. They had done a two-hour 
pilot and two one hour and, and when they very first started that they started it out doing one hour seg segments and would show it once a month and they interchanged it with three other uh, show ideas it was a strange concept in those days and I had seen it and thought boy that's the weirdest show I've ever seen and it turned out that the, po the popularity of it and the, uh, the uh, audience uh, demand they wanted to see more of it well, they started a weekly TV series. Oh. Well, it turned out that a, a good friend of mine that was the first assistant on a show I did in Mexico, which was The Wrath of God, uh, was the director, uh, Ralph Nelson, and I was working for Edward Creek. Well, he got the job, and, and the director, which was the producer also, Jerry Thorpe, asked him, uh, who can we get the double David Carradine for the TV series? He said, I got a guy for you. And they called me in, I got the interview, and... Uh, basically was there for three years. Uh, okay. It was a wonderful opportunity for me. It, it actually springboarded my career into being a coordinator. Uh, in those days, uh, Warner Brothers didn't, I can't get into the legalities of why yeah. they do things, but they basically didn't give stunt coordinators a screen credit. So I negotiated the second season into a, to a, a screen credit called uh, Stunt Liaison. Which, okay. is what a, which is what a coordinator is. Yeah. But uh, so I got stuck layers on credits on that for two years, and um, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. I knew nothing about martial arts, and and I learned it for the TV, and I met some really great people. I've met a lot of great actors, and it just kind of snowballed into. Uh, well, I went on doing stunt work after that, just working for other guys, but it gave me credits where I could go in and, and have confidence to uh, ask people to let me be their stunt work. Oh, sure. So that, that show was really good for me, and uh, uh, David was <laughs> very interesting in those days uh, uh, to work with, uh, and he's still around. David's looking real good now. He's, he's uh, I see him every once in a while, so... Huh. And he, any other ones you got in mind? <laughs> well, you know, uh, that's uh, that's where my next question was going to lead to. Uh, of all the actors or actresses that you worked with uh, throughout your stunt coordinated career, or just you know, to all the films that you've been in, uh, what what who was your favorite to work with? It can be male or female. Boy, that's tough because there's so many good guys, and so many good. Because there, there's a few bad eggs in every basket. Yeah. Of it, but there were some really good people. Uh, Peter Strauss, I, I worked at Double Peter Strauss, I don't know if you remember him, he did a lot of TV stuff, if you saw his face you know exactly who Peter Strauss Yeah. Uh, but I, I did Double Peter for, well he was the, actually the, uh, the star of uh, Soldier Blue, was the name of the first large uh, feature that I went to Mexico to work on, that one I was talking about, Yeah. Uh, where, where ever gave me the shot at Dublin Peter, and from that Peter was very loyal, so I'd say Peter was one of my favorites for sure. I did some coordinating for him also when he got into producing some TV uh, projects. Yeah. Um, gosh, it's just so hard to, to know who was my favorite guy and who wasn't. Uh, I just... Well, you know, I mean, that, that's, you know, maybe a trick question, you know, just because, you know, you have worked with so many. How about Dick Warlock? Because I know you guys are, you know, even when he said in his interview last week that you guys are pretty good friends. We, we, we have known each other a long time. Um... Dick was a great, a very good stunt man and a, and a good actor. And yeah. I, and I was put in a position where I would be able to to uh, ask him to work for me, and I put him in the spots where he did a lot of acting for me. Uh, show we did together, uh, which was a bicycle messenger movie. The uh, oh boy, I can't remember all these titles either. But uh, <laughs> Dick was really good. Uh, yeah. You, you interviewed Mickey Jones. Yes, I did. Me and Mickey go way back. We worked extra together back in the old Daniel Boone days. My, <laughs> dad, was, my dad was a stand-in for Fess Parker on Daniel Boone and, and helped me get into the business. Well, I met Mickey uh, working on Daniel Boone, and, and he was a drummer at the time working clubs in the Southern, Southern California area, and he was just a, a great guy, and we've been friends ever since. And, and since I heard your interview with him, I actually contacted him through email and and we're we're back talking again. So oh, that's it's cool. It's been really good. Yeah, it's been really fun. I'm glad I can make that happen for you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. It really was fun. I mean, I I uh, we get Christmas cards. We yeah. change Christmas cards, but do we ever really take the time to sit down and talk to each other? Not very often. Yeah. We both would like to see each other, but uh, we're gotta say we're quite a ways from. Uh, 
Yeah. Right now. So. Well, you know, I mean, that, who knows? That could always be a range. And, and trust me, if, if Mickey Jones ever came down and visited with you, you'd have to let me know. Because I, <laughs> I would have to love to meet him just as I'd love to meet you as well. And, you know, and, and all the people that I've interviewed, you know, it's just, it's such a, as I was telling you yesterday in our pre-conversation, you know, it's just so amazing, you know, with, they always said, you know, with radio, you you are going to meet or talk to people you never thought you'd ever had a chance to, you know. Can't do that anywhere. Can't do that anywhere else. Well, and there's also the same type of uh, quotes about the motion picture industry, uh, and I have to say that it has uh, been a very, very exciting and interesting life for me. I love to travel, yeah, and that had a lot to do with why I uh, went out and tried to find feature uh, work on feature films more than locally on TV in Los Angeles because I wanted to travel. Oh, sure. It took me to places that I would have never ever dreamed. Uh, I got to go into places that, that the general public is never allowed to go okay. just because we were going to shoot a movie there, you know. Yeah. Uh, my introduction to Minnesota was through the motion pictures. Yeah. Uh, my first introduction to, to Minnesota was, was uh, working on a film in St. Cloud. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, George Fisher, was doing a, a small, low-budget film up there for a guy that was uh, raised in Minnesota, raised in St. Cloud, and uh, basically... Um, hadn't done anything. He was basically fresh, just out of film school, and and was making a film called Catch Me If You Can. Okay. And his name is Stephen Summers. Now, now, is that anywhere like the the movie Catch Me If You Can? Not the newest one that's been out okay. about the uh, traveling uh, con man. Yeah. This is this was a, this was a film. It still, it was called the same thing. And it's the only instance that I know of them ever actually making another film without it being a remake. Yeah. But this was with Matt Latanzi and produced and directed by Stephen Summers. And Stephen Summers was just a young kid at that time. Yeah. And I came up and I worked on the film and I actually did a part in the show called The Widowmaker, which I was a, uh, a hired gun to come in. It was, a, it was about kids racing cars on the street. That's yeah. what it was. I don't know if you ever saw that show. Oh, People I don't think so. Clouds sure know about it. <laughs> I'm kind of notorious down there for being the Widowmaker. Yeah. Uh, I was hired by the bad guy in the movie to come in and race him and run him off the road and try to keep him from succeeding at his goals. You have to see the movie to know what I'm talking yeah. about, but it was a lot of fun, and, and I got to uh, do a lot of car stuff on that, but I also got to do a pretty good part in it as the Widowmaker, and it was uh, pretty interesting, but it introduced me to people in Minnesota, and after that, I I uh, was gone for a few years, then I came back and did another show in Minneapolis for Alan Rudolph, which was Equinox. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of that one yet. Uh, I don't think so. so There's a lot I haven't seen yet. <laughs> well, and they're a few years ago. Yeah. So I have to, you know, apologize that I don't have a lot of new credit for you guys. <laughs> uh, this was a Matthew Modine show right there okay. in Equinox, uh, Equinox within in Minneapolis. Yeah. They didn't call it Minneapolis, they called it something else weird. Empire City or something. Yeah. And Alan was always just on the verge of being futuristic weird. And uh, it was Matthew Modine and Laura, Vin Laura Flynn Boyle was the name. Okay. But there was some really great guys in that. Uh, uh, O'Connor, uh, boy, I thought of his name a little earlier and thought about him. If you ask me about good guys or not, this kid was really a good guy. <laughs> but I got to I got to work in, in Minneapolis. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to call my friends in St. Cloud and go up and take a visit because I hadn't seen him in a few years. And it was a man that said, uh, Buzz Christ, who was actually a, a, a Max Racer and a racing family, but he had been hired on. So how these how these stories go round and around. Buzz had been hired locally to help build the stunt car. Okay. So I got to know him because we were doing car chases, and my friend Rick Siemens, who's a, a well-known stunt car driver and teacher, uh, did a great car jump in it, where he jumped a '57 Chevy over like a six and a half foot fence, almost through the goalpost <laughs> in the high school. And um, so we got to know Buzz, and uh, I came back up to visit Buzz when I was here on Equinox, and uh, oh, long story, if you make a long story short, he said, why don't you buy a racetrack and get into the racing business? Uh, I got to thinking about it, a few years went by, I shopped racetracks, they called me one time and said, you know, there's a place called Bavici, Minnesota that has a racetrack for sale. I was thinking about it, I came up here, it was right at the time I was working on, you mentioned Kansas City. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Robert Altman in Kansas City. So I came up from there and uh, made the deal and 
we decided to make the move, and so here I am in Minnesota. And without the motion picture business, I would have never yeah. thought about coming to Minnesota. Yeah. That was a, it was a, a well-kept secret. Well, you do like it around the area, I'm sure, and I that's know. like we mentioned already, and, you know, and like I said, you know, you know, I've been trying to get hooked up with some of these people, and, and I know you, you were mentioning to me, and maybe this would be good publicity for you, uh, well, early probably, but uh, you're talking about doing a documentary on bull roping or something like that? Or bull riding? Uh, the bull breeding business, yep. where they're breeding these bulls, and, and uh, for the rodeo and for bull riding, everybody's familiar now with the PBR on TV. Yep. And so, yes, I was uh, saying I have a desire to put together a package and try to sell it somewhere that would include uh, basically the bull industry, the bucking bull industry. Um, there, and I'm finding out the more I'm around here, there's a lot of it going on in, in these northern Midwest states yeah. that I gave credit to when I first thought about getting into this. Uh, even though the big bulk of the breeders and everything are in Oklahoma and Texas yeah. and all down in there. My friend, uh, Mike Porter, who has the mm -hmm. uh he's in South Carolina. Okay. So the business is, you know, it's like computers have opened the world to everybody. It's, yeah. it's made the world very small. <laughs> so uh, I would like to be able to do what I love and still be involved in a craft that I'm very uh, aware of, I mean, you know, educated in, yeah. which is producing and basically uh, on-set working. And it's, it's just, it's just a, 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 a lifestyle that you can't get out of your blood. Yeah. Uh, the rodeo is one that, that is resurfacing now, um, but uh, production and being involved in film in any form, any any form of the of the art, uh, is still in the blood, and I, I just feel lost without being involved. Oh sure. Uh, and you asked me asked you earlier, you know, when did I get started performing? And I basically got started performing when I first learned to walk. My dad was making a, a movie. Um, not necessarily anything that was published or produced or, or anything, but he was making movies and I would work in those. And then he was a rodeo announcer. Like I said, I was raised yeah. in the rodeo. So I worked with the rodeo clowns. And when they did acts in front of the audience, I would do silly things like run out and let the dog pull my pants off. <laughs> so I've been working in front of audiences and crowds almost as long as I could walk. Yeah. Uh, and so. Yeah, I try to keep busy, but it's awful hard to get that out of your blood. I can't just sit here and watch TV. Yeah. Old, you know. <laughs> Getting old, you can't stop, but you don't have to just sit and vegetate. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I do appreciate the fact that you uh, are on, and uh, we're almost out of time. Okay. But, uh, uh, one thing that I want to do, well, first of all, thank you, first of all, for uh, letting me interview you. I, I think, uh, well, just like I said, I, and I know this for a fact, that you know that, that you and I will have a chance to meet here soon. And, uh, you know, since you're not that far away, you know. That, you can count on it. Uh, whether you want to or not, you're going to have to put up with me. I'm going to come and visit. I want to see your community, and uh, we will talk some more. Yeah, we, we, and you know what? And like I said, if there's any way that I can help you with live, live your dream as far as uh, the, the bowl roping and bowl riding uh, experience or documentary that you want to do, as I told you before, I would be a huge, uh, perfect host for a documentary because I, I, I think in the future, I think that's what I'd be good at, you know. Well, we will discuss that. <laughs> we can definitely work on it. Okay. And the uh, last thing I want you to do is uh, what I told you yesterday is give me a, a legal ID. You got it. Um, okay. This is Greg Walker. You're listening to Frankie Swanson. Stop. Can we do a take two? Yeah. It's Frankie Swanson. Swanson. I got it right. Yeah. I can't read it. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Hi, this is Greg Walker. You're listening to, to Frankie Slauson on Pioneer 90.1. All right. And that, like I said, man, I do appreciate it. And uh, let people know about Pioneer 90.1 and, and Frankie Slauson and whatnot. <laughs> I sure will. And uh, you keep me uh, posted if you get any ideas, and uh, we'll get together and visit real soon, Frankie. All right. Happy New Year, man. Thank you, my man. All right. Bye.